NZXT knows we've been struggling a little bit to have a powerful gaming computer for the conference room. They sent this over. This is the H1. This is like a big boy version of the new Xbox form factor. Another ITX case, yet another ITX case. What, what is this thing coming to? I'm building an army. You just have to give me a second. It's not necessarily always about, you know, 150 core CPUs. Although that does get my motor running. This version of the H1 actually includes a power supply. So yeah, you get a 680 watt power supply right in the box. That is enough to do a 2080 Ti. But as we've seen with some of our other ITX builds this year, that's not necessarily enough. It's also cooling capacity. Can it run quietly? And yeah, sure, you can build a quiet ITX system, but can you build a quiet ITX system with a lot of cores and GPU? The other thing, this case has a bundled AIO. So it's 140 millimeter, but it's designed specifically for this case so that you get a little bit better situation with your CPU cooling. Now I've got to test both blower style and non-blower style GPUs because the everything plugs in here at the bottom. The GPU is vertically in this case, but 280 watt PSU plus 140 millimeter cooler in this form factor, that gives NZXT a little bit more room for profit and a little bit more room to charge because it's not just an ITX case. You've also got a lot of other stuff with it. Still has a tempered glass side panel, although I might have liked to have seen a, another mesh corner, but it's mesh on three sides. So, I mean, I can't really complain. There's enough airflow here for, I think whatever we're gonna wanna do, it's just gonna be a question of noise. Now, since this system is for gaming, I'm just gonna opt for the Ryzen 5 3600X. Oh, it's hard to believe it, six cores, I mean. Phew. It looks like the monolith from, uh, 2001, just So what's the verdict on our quadratic companion? It's surprisingly easy to build in. It does work, it does work pretty well. The 140 millimeter AIO has this weird square cutout. That's where the pump is, so the pump's kind of relocated. But I'm using the Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard in this build, which is not without its quirks. Actually, if you're gonna use a GPU like the, uh, say the Gigabyte 5700 XT. This is one of the best performing 5700 XTs that you can get. And I think I would rather be using this than an NVIDIA GTX 1080. This is a newer card. The performance is about the same. The 5700 XT is a little better. Uh, the problem is the riser cable. It's PCI Express 3.0. PCI Express 4.0 riser cables, even if you get a good one, it can lead to black screens and dropouts and BSODs and all sorts of other problems. Now, if you do decide to rock an AMD build, at least an AMD GPU, well, an AMD GPU and a CPU, because then PCI Express 4 enters the equation. I've got the ASRock Phantom Gaming ITX TB, which does actually have a setting for letting you change the PCI Express mode, but that would be critical to do because the riser cable that comes with the NZXT H1 does not support PCI Express 4.0. It'll kind of work, but then it'll sort of drop out, black screen, crash, blue screen. Not every ITX motherboard gives you the option, but it's supposed to be under AMD PBS. Under AMD PBS, we've got options for things like PCIe ReDriver, but buried at the bottom here on this motherboard, we've got the PCIe X16 bus interface. You've got to explicitly pick PCI Express Gen 3. Even though this is a Gen 4 card, even though we've got a Gen 4 CPU, the riser cable, it's not gonna work. It's also a good idea, even if you're gonna run, you know, with the, the 1080 that I had in there just a moment ago, it's a good idea to go ahead and set PCIe Gen 3 because it'll try to auto-train and it's not gonna auto-train to PCI Express 4, but it seems to make things a little more stable setting it for PCI Express Gen 3. Also, in terms of physical room, there's enough room here for a two slot card. This is a two and a half slot card from Gigabyte. So you can take off the dust filter. There's a dust filter on both sides of the solid U-shaped part of the case. If you take the dust filter out, then the card will fit barely. There's not even one millimeter of clearance, but the fans don't rub against the outside of the case or anything like that. It could work in a pinch, although generally I'm gonna recommend that you go with a two slot card. So we got cards like the original, like the launch day, like the blower style 5700 XT. 
and uh, I've got the blower style 1080 as well. The problem with that is that it's trying to exhaust the hot air out the bottom of the case, which does work, but is a suboptimal configuration. With this, at least, cool air is drawn in all up and down the sides and then sort of pushed out this way, which is glass on this side, but it'll be pushed around the motherboard and exhausted by the fan on the other side. So back here uh, is where our 140 millimeter all in one is it's connected to the CPU so the warm air from the GPU will be drawn in and that'll help carry that away. In testing I did a 3700, a 3800 and a 3900. The 3900 was pushing the limits of what this 140 millimeter all in one can do. You might be able to run a 3950 but I'm almost certainly gonna be a situation where you need like eco mode or like you need to manually set the TDP so it doesn't run quite as hot because otherwise this, this layout can get kind of warm. This framed layout, stacked layout kind of thing where it's got, you know, the removable, removable glass side panels. There is some opportunity here for RGB. If you're an RGB person, I think I would go for like ground effects, like RGB lighting in the bottom here. Corsair, uh, you know, ASRock X570 ITX motherboard has some lighting across the front here, which I think works really well with the, uh, the particular uh, PCI Express extension cable that's here. In terms of the power supply, it looks an awful lot like a Seasonic power supply. It is modular, and so there's a couple unused modular spots, but you have four of the PCIe style connections. So even if you're gonna run like a, a, a graphics card that requires triple power, it would work. Just bear in mind that you've only got slightly less than two and a half slots worth of room to work with on the side here. At the top, you've got USB-C and USB-3. I would have liked to have seen two USB-3 and a USB-C, especially since it's connecting to a header that has two USB 3.0 connections and the USB-C cable is a separate cable. Of course, our Phantom Gaming ITX motherboard doesn't have a USB-C header. Uh, some of the Intel boards do. If you, if you wanted to, you could put a, you know, a 9900K in here. I may revisit this build with Intel CPUs because the results were interesting trying to cool the 3900X, that's the 12 core. So there may be some room in here for the 9900K or the 9900KS. I'm not sure about that. I'm gonna have to do another build and there wasn't, wasn't quite enough time to do both an Intel and an AMD build with this system. I had a lot of fun putting this together. This is a, an interesting form factor that NZXT has come up with. I'm not really super big in the case game, but it might be a fairly unique form factor. Oh, and this is going to be our new conference room computer. So that with where we also do our Twitch streaming and stuff like that. So thanks NZXT for sending the case over because I was like, Hey, you know, something I need something kind of quiet, but, uh, you want to do something for this build for our conference room, so our conference room machines, a six core 3600 X, which works great in here and a GeForce GTX 1080, probably going to upgrade that, but you know, I'm going to this is level one. This has been a build in the NZXT H1. So yeah, if you decide to build with this, show off in the level one form, take some pictures, show us. Signing out, I'll see you there.